Lesson 3.2 Estimate Products of Factors with Two Digits We can use strategies to estimate products. We can round each factor to the greatest place value, which is the place value farthest to the left. We can use compatible numbers. So remember the rounding rules that we learned. We underline the place value that we're rounding to, and we use the digit to its right to help us round. And if the digit to its right is a 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, the underlined digit stays the same, and the digits to its right become zeros. 42 rounds to 40. And if the, we have a 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9, the underlined digit will go up by one more, and the digits to the right become zeros. The 5 tells the 4 to go up 1, it becomes a 5, and then it becomes a 0 when it's finished telling 4 what to do. Compatible numbers are friendly numbers. They're easy to compute mentally, like 10 times 10 is equal to 100, 25 times 2 is equal to 50. That would be like 2 quarters. Two 25 cent pieces are 50 cents, right? 25 times 3 is equal to 75. That would be like having 3 quarters, wouldn't it? We'd have 75 cents. And 25 times 4 is 100, because there's 4 quarters in a dollar. We can think of that as $1 or 100. And 50 times 2 is equal to 100. Those are all friendly numbers. They're all compatible numbers, and they're very easy to compute mentally. And multiples of 10 would be easy to compute mentally. We need to use rounding and mental math for this one. Sophia makes 28 bracelets each day. There are 31 days in July. About how many bracelets did she make in July? So we need to estimate 28 times 31 because of the word about. It's not asking for an exact amount. It's asking for about how many. We have a 28 and a 31. For 28, we're rounding to the tens place. The 8 tells the 2 to go up. It becomes a 3. And when the 8 is finished with its job, it becomes a 0. It rounds to 30. For 31, the 1 tells the 3 to stay the same. And when it's finished with its job, it becomes a 0. We have 30 times 30. And we can look at the basic facts of 3 times 3, which is 9. And there's two zeros in the factors, so we're going to have two zeros in the product. We have 900. We talked about the zeros in the factors in the product in video 2.3, and there's a link in this description if you haven't seen it. So in July, Sophia made about 900 bracelets. That's an estimate. It's not an exact amount. A store sold 41 shirts for $24 each. About how much money did the store make in sales? So we need to estimate 41 times $24 because of the word about. We don't need an exact amount. We need about how much so we can estimate. And we can use mental math and compatible numbers. We have 41 shirts times $24 each. We can think 4 times 25. That's very close to 41 times 24 as a 40 times 25. See, we have a 4 times a 25 here with an extra 0. We think 4 times 25 is equal to 100, or 4 times 25 is equal to $100. We have that 0 there, don't we? So if there's a 0 in the factor, there's going to be a 0 in the product. 40 times $25 would be about $1,000 that the store made in sales. Instead of rounding the 24 to a 20, we made it a compatible number of 25 to multiply it by the four tens. So we can estimate by rounding to the nearest 10 or by using compatible numbers. So here we have 26 times $82. We're going to try rounding it to the nearest 10 to get an estimate. We're going to use compatible numbers to get an estimate. The 6 tells the 2 to go up to a 3. 
and it's finished with its job, it becomes a zero. And the two tells the eight to stay the same, it does, and then the two becomes a zero. And we have 30 times $80. And we think three times eight, and three times eight is 24. We have two zeros in the factor, so we have two zeros in the product. We have $2,400. Using compatible numbers, instead of rounding the 26 to 30, we're going to make it a 25. And we multiply it times $80, which would be the 82 rounded. And we think 25 times $80, we can use halving and doubling. If we cut the $80 in half to a $40, then we have 25 times 4, see it, which is 100. We have a 0 in the factor, so we have a 0 in the product, so it would be $1,000. So that's halving. That's only half of the 80. Now, to get the other half, we have to double the product, and we would get $2,000. We learned about halving and doubling in video 2.8, which is also linked in the description. Now, we had an estimate of $2,400 when we rounded to the nearest 10, and we had $2,000 when we used compatible numbers. And both answers are reasonable because the factors are close to the actual factors. But 25 times $80 is better as an estimate because the factors are closer to the actual factors. Look at, we have 26 and 30, there's a difference of 4. Here we have 26 and 25, there's only a difference of 1. So these numbers, these factors are closer to the actual factors. We're going to get an estimate that's closer to the actual amount. In some situations, it's better for us to estimate than find exact answers. We could be deciding if we have enough money when at the store, or figuring how many pizzas to order for a party, or how many tiles to buy to tile a floor, maybe how much paint to buy to paint some walls. We can estimate how much we need. Now take a look at this. We have 19 times 19, and 19 rounds to 20, so we have 20 times 20. If the rounded factors are greater than the actual factors, the estimate will be greater than the exact answer. That kind of makes sense, right? We're multiplying larger factors, so the estimate's going to be larger. Now look at this. We have 21 times 21, but it rounds to 20 times 20. And if the rounded factors are less than the actual factors, the estimate will be less than the exact answer, and we will underestimate the amount. And now look at these numbers. We have 19 rounded to 20, so the 20 is larger than the 19, it's greater. Now we have 21 that rounds to 20, so this rounded factor is less than the actual one. Well, if one rounded factor is greater and another rounded factor is less than the actual factors, the estimate will be close to the exact answer. 20 times 20 is 400, and 19 times 21 is 399. That's very close. It's just one difference, isn't it? It says find two possible factors for the estimated product. And these are estimates. So the factors should be close to the exact factors. Because they're estimates, they're not going to be exact factors, but they should be close to the exact factors. We have 3,200, and we think, well, 8 times 4 is equal to 32, so 80 times 40 is equal to 3,200. We can have a factor of any number that rounds to 80, it would be from 75 to 84, because the 5 would tell the 7 to go up to an 8 and become a 0, so that would round to 80, wouldn't it? 
and the 4 would tell the 8 to stay the same, and that would round to 80. If this were 74, then it would round to 70. So we know the factor can be any number that rounds to 80 that's between 75 and 84. For, for the 40, we could have any number that rounds to 40. It could be any number between 35 to 44. Here we have 4,200. We think, well, 6 times 7 is equal to 42. So 60 times 70 is equal to 4,200. Two zeros in the factors, two zeros in the product. See it? So this factor could be any number that rounds to 60. So it'd be any number from 55 to 64. And this could be any number that rounds to 70 between 65 and 74. Any one of those could be po possible factors for this as an estimated product or for this as an estimated product. This one says Bob exercises for 45 minutes each day and he exercised four days in the first week, five days in the second week, and six days in the third week. About how many minutes did Bob exercise? So because it says about, we estimate. So it's important to know that he exercises 45 minutes each day, and he did four days, five days, and six days. And it's important that the word about is there because then we know we need to estimate. We're going to estimate and round. So 45, the 5 tells the 4 to go up to a 5. And then when it's finished with its job, it becomes a 0. So 45 becomes 50. Now we can multiply 50 minutes each day for 4 days, then 50 minutes each day for 5 days, and 50 minutes each day for 6 days. And 50 times 4 days is 200. See, 4 times 5 is 20, and there's another 0 in the factor. So we have 20 with a 0. See that? We have 50 times 5. We can think 5 times 5 with a 0 at the end. So that's 25 with a 0 at the end, 250. And we have 6 times 5, which is 30, with a 0 in the factor. So we have 30 with a 0 in the product. That's 300. And we can add 200, 250, and 300, and we get 750 minutes. So we know Bob exercises for about 750 minutes for those days. The estimated product of two factors, which are not multiples of 10, is 4,500. What are the possible factors? So first, remember that multiples of 10 would be like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and so on. Those are multiples of 10. So the two factors are not multiples of 10. And the estimated product is 4,500. So we think, well, I see a 45 here, and 9 times 5 is equal to 45. And there's two zeros in the product, so there must be two zeros in the factor. So 90 times 50 is equal to 4,500. That could be the possible factors. And the first factor can be any number that rounds to 90. So that could be 85 to 94. All the numbers between 85 to 94 will round to 90 when rounded to the tens place. And the second factor can be any number that rounds to 50. So any number, 45 to 54, is going to round to 50. So we can have any one of these factors for the first one and any one of these for the second one. Here it says, which is a reasonable estimate for the product. So we need to write these rounded factors into the correct box. So if we look at this one, we have 18 times 24. We can think, what would 18 round to? And the 8 tells the 1 to go up to a 2 and it becomes a 0. So that would be a 20. And we have 24. The 4 tells the 2 to stay the same and it becomes a 0. So we have another 20. 
We could also use common sense and see, well, there's only one choice that has a 20, and it's this one, so it must be 20 times 20, but that one does fit because they both round to 20. For this one, the 4 tells the 3 to stay the same, and it does, then it becomes a 0, so now we have 30. And the 7 tells the 5 to go up to a 6, and it becomes a 0, so we have 30 times 60, so it would be this one. And we can also use common sense and say, well, if this rounds to 30 and there's only one box that has a 30 in it, that must be the right answer. We only have one box left and it's this one, but let's double check to make sure it's correct. Now, it doesn't say that we have to round it. It just says it's an estimate. So we have a 26 times 49. We could use compatible numbers and make this a 25 times a 50 like here. And we found the reasonable estimate for the products. In our next lesson, 3.3, we're going to use area models and partial products to multiply two-digit numbers. So we'll be working with grid paper. I hope to see you there. Have a really great day. Bye.